celebrate this American spirit, it is necessary for us to turn our minds back to the unfortunate event which has revived this spirit. We do so by way of the music of a giant American musical voice. Aaron Copland composed Quiet City in 1940. Its impetus was New York City. We use Quiet City tonight to score images of that day and the words spoken by the people and their leaders. Some of these images will be shocking. It is important, however, that we never forget. I take you back to the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001. of the people spoke to the unknown despots, you monster, you beast, you unspeakable wretch. What lesson did you hope to teach us by your coward's act on our World Trade Center, our Pentagon, us? What was it you hoped we would learn? Whatever it was, please know that you failed. Did you want us to respect your cause? You just damned your cause. Did you want it to make us fear? You just steeled our resolve. Did you want to tear us apart? You just brought us together. Yes, we're in pain now. You've bloodied us as we have never been bloodied before. But there's a gulf of difference between bloodying us and making us fall. This is the lesson taught the last time anyone hit us this hard. The last time anyone brought us such abrupt and monumental pain. When roused, we are righteous in our outrage and terrible in our force. When provoked by this level of barbarism, we will bear any suffering, pay any cost, go to any length in the pursuit of justice. Let me tell you about my people. We are a vast and quarrelsome family. We're frivolous. We're wealthy too, spoiled by ready availability of trinkets and material goods. We are fundamentally decent though. We struggle to know the right thing and to do it. And we are a people of faith. Some people, you perhaps, think that any or all of this makes us weak. You're mistaken. We are not weak. Indeed, we are strong in ways that cannot be measured by arsenals. What was it you hoped to teach us? It occurs to me that maybe you just wanted us to know the depths of your hatred. Consider the message received and take this message in exchange. You don't know my people. You don't know what we're capable of. You don't know what you just started but you're about to find out.
As the dust settled, the president spoke. This is a conflict with battlefields or beachheads. A conflict with opponents who believe they are invisible. Yet they are mistaken. They will be exposed and they will discover what others in the past have learned. Those who make war with the United States have chosen their own destruction. Victory against terrorism will not take place in a single battle, but in a series of decisive actions against terrorist organizations and those who harbor and support them. We are planning a broad and sustained campaign to secure our country and eradicate the evil of terrorism. We are determined to see this conflict through. Americans of every faith and every background are committed to this goal. For yesterday, I visited the site of the destruction in New York City. I saw an amazing spirit of sacrifice and patriotism and defiance. I met with rescuers who have worked past exhaustion, who cheered for our country and the great cause we have entered. In Washington, D.C., the political parties of both houses of Congress have shown a remarkable unity. A terrorist attack designed to tear us apart has instead bound us together as never before. Over the past few days, we have learned much about American courage, the courage of firefighters and police officers who suffered so great a loss, the courage of passengers aboard United Flight 93 who may well have fought with hijackers and saved many lives on the ground. Now we honor those who died and prepare to respond to these attacks on our nation. Our response must be sweeping, sustained, and effective. We have much to do and much yet to ask of the American people. You will be asked for your patience, for the conflict will not be short. You will be asked for resolve, for the conflict will not be easy. You will be asked for your strength because the course to victory may be long. In the past few days, we have seen the American people at their very best everywhere in America. Citizens have come together to pray, to give blood, to fly our country's flag. Americans are coming together to share their grief and pain and gain strength for one another. Great tragedy has come to us, and we will meet it with the very best in our country, with courage and concern for others. Because this is America. This is who we are, and this is why we will prevail.